Hey YouTube, it's Justin aka Demonic Sweaters here with another product review. Today we're going to be taking a look at this audio interface by Donner. This is the LiveJack Lite two-channel audio interface. You know, this company is really starting to make a lot of cool stuff and it's all really, really inexpensive. Now if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, there's a link down below. Uh, you might want to check out the full video first. Full disclosure, they did send me this unit for free, but I will give you my honest opinion on this device. So like I said, Donner makes a whole lot of gear these days. I just did a review on a Donner bass that I really, really love. That bass is only like $129 or something like that. And much like the Donner bass, this is a very affordable piece of gear. It's about $119, I think, on their website. And Donner runs sales all the time on their site. So just check out that link down below. Let me open this thing up. I actually already opened it up here a little while ago on a live stream and some of you guys saw that. Uh, but I haven't hooked it up yet. So just to take a look at the device itself, it's a fairly simple design. Uh, it looks pretty nice. It's got a solid metal chassis here, uh, front and back. Actually, the front is plastic, but the back panel and the sides are all metal. Um, it has a combo uh, quarter inch and XLR jack for channel one. It has a standard quarter inch uh, for the second input jack on it. And then it also has direct monitoring with this big knob right here. And then a headphone output with a separate headphone volume adjustment. On the back, it's very simple with just two left and right balanced outputs, as well as a USB-C connection for the USB cable that they provide, which is right here. Um, so yeah, USB-C on one side, USB-A on the other side. So now I just basically have to hook this thing up and check it out. Um, one of the things I noticed while looking at the book that came with it is actually Donner include their own USB audio driver, which I think is pretty cool, an ASIO driver. So we're gonna check that out too. And I'm gonna hook it up to my Windows computer and see how it works. Before we get started with that though, be sure to check out my music at my label, anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. My musical project, Minnesota has a new CD coming out here in about a month, so check out that link down below, and uh, you can pre-order the Digipack uh, for As the Sun Rises Deluxe Edition on CD. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this video. All right, so I've got it hooked up, and uh, Windows just, you know, recognized it right away as a Windows audio device, but I still want to install the actual uh, Donner drivers uh, so I can use it uh, with ASIO. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, I don't know if these are supposed to light up, but I don't see any lights when I push in the buttons on the front. Maybe that'll change when I use the driver. So we'll see about that. Uh, let me go ahead and install that and then we'll see. All right, so Windows gets fussy about the driver and uh, you're gonna have to select run anyway uh, to install it because Windows just, it does that with a lot of things. I'm sure you've run into that before. If you've installed Windows software, uh, I don't think this would be a virus. I don't think they would do that. So let me go ahead and install it. All right, the driver installed just fine. And looking at Donner's website here, it does appear that those buttons on the bottom don't light up. That's just sort of the design. I'm thinking these two lights here must be like the lever, lever, level LEDs. Uh, but we'll figure that out once I start using it. The first test though that I wanna do is to see what kind of latency I can get with this thing on my computer. All right, now that I installed the driver, uh, as you can see there, we have the 48 volt phantom power light as well as a LED that lights up as I'm speaking. Uh, I'm pretty close to the microphone right now, and that's what it's picking up. So I think I'm gonna have to switch over to my screen capture software, uh, and then we'll see what this thing sounds like uh, with my mic. Okay, so I'm recording directly into the LiveJack device right now using my uh, Shure KSN32 microphone. And uh, this is just the default interface control here you see on the screen that, that opens up after you install the driver. And uh, we can see our sample rate, uh, we can change that from 41 or 44 100 all the way up to 192k uh, kilohertz uh, which is uh, very high quality uh, most of the time i mean for me personally most of the time i either leave either leave mine on 44 1 or 48,000. Uh, but it's totally up to you now the buffer now i can't really change this while i'm recording my screen so it'll probably make it glitch out or something but i did notice here one option is eight samples which is crazy like i will be so amazed if it will go that low but we'll see i'm gonna go into ableton and then open up uh, the driver again and see just how low i can set this buffer and see how low latency i can actually get 
uh, using this audio interface. So let me go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I'm in Ableton now, and if I open up the Ableton uh, settings, sorry for the glare on my screen, let me try to block that. Uh, Ableton settings, I basically, you can see there that it says, says 32 samples, and even if I set the buffer size here in the uh, Donner uh, app to eight as the buffer, the lowest that Ableton will let me go is 32. So I think that's kind of a limitation on Ableton. But still, uh, input latency, 2.22 milliseconds, which is really, really low. Uh, but we'll see if this even plays like this. Now what I'm gonna test this on is actually using a project uh, where I have a lot of plugins, there's a lot of tracks, there's a lot of stuff going on at once. So we'll see if this is gonna play at the lowest setting. And uh, I have it set at 44, 100 uh, kilohertz for my s sample rate. And the reason for that is that's how I, I started this project and my old interface only went to that sample rate. So uh, that's just what it's gonna have to be. So let me see if this will play back. <laughs> See if we get any glitches, but so far I don't hear any. And just to give you some idea, I have in this song 19 audio tracks and MIDI playing at once with various plugins on a lot of the channels. Uh, this is basically a full mix. So that is pretty promising right there. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's very promising. I, I wasn't hearing any glitches. Now, I mean, I almost never set them as low as it'll go. Um, usually 32 is, or 64 or 128 is fine. I just wanted to see if I could set it on the lowest setting and if it would work and it seems like it is. So even though, like I said, Ableton doesn't seem like it lets me go past uh, 32. So let's check with Reaper. Maybe Reaper will. Let's go ahead and close Ableton. And uh, I'm gonna open up Reaper now and see if I can get Reaper to go down to like super low uh, buffer setting land. <laughs> so let's go into the preferences here. First I have to select Stop using ASIO for all. Select my Donner as the driver. And now let's see. Um, one thing I noticed though is Ableton and it seems like Reaper, when you try to press the button from the, the settings within the program to call the Donner driver app, that doesn't seem to work. Uh, you just pretty much have to open it from your uh, taskbar, which is okay. I mean, it doesn't really bother me, but. Let's go ahead and set this down to eight again. And request block size. Now is that the, I think that's the buffer size. So I'm just gonna say eight and we'll see what it does. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but we'll see. So let's go back to the beginning here. And is that really running it? I don't know if that's really running that low that's hard to believe if that's the case. Um, let's open back up. I mean, it seems like it is. Input latency is 1.67 milliseconds. I know it's tiny on the screen there. You can't really see it. Let me zoom in. 1.67 milliseconds, 1.49 milliseconds for the output latency. And this is using the Donner driver. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Um, I'm not going to do it that low just because I, I feel kind of crazy doing it, doing it that low. I'm just going to set it to 32. And uh, that should be fine. That's fine for me. Let me zoom back out here. Uh, but uh, I think it's running at a buffer of 8. Again, I'm not getting any glitches, so that is very, very good, uh, at least so far. So now, 
what I need to do now is actually record something with this thing and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and try to record. All right, I just wanted to explain everything you guys just saw there, uh, how I hooked everything up. And what I did, uh, first off, the acoustic guitar was just one microphone, the Shure KSM32, plugged directly into channel one of the Donner interface. And then my bass, I ran just a quarter inch cable into uh, channel two. And I got the level that way. I used the direct monitoring feature for both when I was recording. I didn't monitor through Reaper, which is another way that you can do it, but you'll get latency that way. Uh, even though my latency is uh, pretty good, it's uh, I set it down. I didn't keep it as low as I had it in the the test in the beginning. I actually set it at 256 for the buffer, uh, which is fine. I mean that's totally fine. I was just afraid that I would get some glitching or something if I was down that low. Uh, so I set it at 256. Drums. That's the only thing that I didn't record through the interface because I use my TD27. And the TD27 essentially is an audio interface itself. So I just switched over to that when I recorded the drum tracks and then switched back uh, for the synth track, which I used my Donner uh, DMK25 uh, for the synth parts. And then I used my Donner bass, my Donner standard series bass uh, for the bass parts. So a lot of Donner equipment on that track. And uh, yeah, I think it came out good. My only uh, little criticism of this interface, well, I have two things. Uh, one, I don't really like the fact that it's USB-C connecting on the back because that cable tends to be a little bit touchy. Like I was screwing around with some cables and stuff and I, I kind of tugged at it a little bit and I noticed that it came disconnected from the uh, app from the DAW when I did that. And it wasn't unplugged or anything. It's just kind of like, you know, those little USB connections can kind of be a little touchy. So you kind of don't want to touch it back there or mess with the cable while you're recording. I didn't have any problems while I was recording, but still it's just a little thing that kind of bugged me uh, about the device. Um, the other thing is the fact that it only has one XLR input, uh, which is fine for home studio use, but if I were going to be recording like acoustic drums, then I would want two XLR inputs so I could at least have two condensers plugged into there. Um, of course, I always could run a mixer into uh, two quarter inch into the interface and do it that way. But, you know, if I were just using the interface, uh, I would probably want to have uh, two condensers. Now, I probably could plug a dynamic mic into uh, the input number two using a, um, you know, unbalanced cable. That probably would work. I haven't tried it, but I would imagine it should work. And then you could record with two mics that way. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's good. You know, it. It gets really low latency. Uh, it sounds really nice. Uh, the audio quality seems to be really, really good. All right, that's the Donner Live Jack Light audio interface, and I think it's overall pretty good. Um, is it the cheapest audio interface on the market? No. Is it the best audio interface on the market? Probably not, but it's definitely a contender. Um, it's definitely uh, affordable. 
There's cheaper ones out there, but for what you get on this one, I think it's good for the money and it does seem to work really well and you can get really low latency. Now, I should mention that my computer is quite powerful. So, you know, keep that in mind. I'm running a Ryzen 7 uh, 3700X, I think, uh, CPU and then 32 gigabytes RAM. So I'm definitely using a power powerful system here. So you may not get as good results as late uh, for latency on another computer. I will say though that I can get lower latency on this audio interface than I can on my Behringer interface as well as my Alesis interface. So out of the three, uh, this one will go the lowest out of those three interfaces. Um, this one actually goes as low as I had an SSL2 uh, interface and that was the only one that would go as low as this one as far as the buffer settings go. Now at $119, it's moderately priced. And like I said, Donner does sales all the time on their website. And if you buy like a bundle of stuff from Donner's website, I, I know you can get even better deals. And uh, they have pretty much everything on that site now where you could buy like everything you need to set up a full home studio basically uh, through Donner these days. It's crazy, all the stuff that they're making. But anyway, I think it's really good for the money. I think it'll probably end up being my mainstay audio interface, you know, at home here because I don't need a lot of channels on my YouTube computer, like desktop computer. So it'll work just fine here. If you're doing like podcasting or YouTube or just basic home studio use like you saw me do today, electronic drums you can record, even though I didn't do that with mine, but you could plug right and left input out of a uh, electronic drum module directly into it. It doesn't have MIDI input. So if you're looking to do like Easy Drummer or something like that uh, from an electronic drum set, you'll either have to use the USB output from the electronic drums or a USB to MIDI adapter. So yeah, but I mean, that goes without saying for a lot of audio interfaces in this price range. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, click the bell icon, thumbs up and all that good stuff. And uh, check out my record label, anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. Like I said, I have a Digipack CD by Manasota coming out as the Sun Rises Deluxe Edition. And I think it's going to be really good. So if you could pre-order that down below, that'll help me out a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys really soon. Have a great day. Later.